Hey everyone! Um, so this video log is long overdue. Um, but hey, I'm finally getting around to it, so that's good. Um, Alright, let me start off with, this is a heart monitor. You know, it looks pretty funny, but I get to wear this for the next, like, 28 or 29 days. Um, and the paint, the weird paint samples on the wall are... They've been up here for like four or five months now. Um, I'm trying to choose colors to paint my house and yeah, it's been quite the experience. I didn't know there was so many shades of white. <laughs> so, but I think I have my choices picked out now, though they are none of the ones that are up on the walls. Um, I had to have a color designer come in and help me pick and yeah none of these colors what it works so cross my fingers that the colors that the uh, color designer designer and I picked um, hopefully they work <laughs> oh my god I can't deal with this again anyways um blabbering on uh so I wanted to discuss uh, my recent medical issues. Back in the end of July of um, 2018, so last year, I had an appointment with a new gynecologist um, about some weird symptoms that I had been showing for like over half a year. Um, she was very worried, very concerned. Uh, but she wanted a second opinion from a more senior doctor. So I set up another appointment for like the next day or the day after, I want to say. Um, that doctor thought that nothing was wrong. Um, they did like a pap smear or like a colposcopy or something like that. I honestly can't really remember. Um, and then I want to say like a week or two later, I um, go in to get my results for the, from that. Um, my gynecologist Ugh, I can't even talk right now. My gynecologist wasn't there. Um, she was supposed to give me the results. Uh, so I spoke to, like, one of the office managers, and they talked to somebody else and pretty much told me, like, oh, you need to go over to our other office. Like, they have some news for you. And, of course, like, I'm freaking out. Just, like, oh, it's so bad. Um, so I get in the car, driving over there, it was like 15 minutes away, and I, I mean, I probably shouldn't have driven, to be honest, like, I was in, like, such a daze. Anyway, so like, two minutes away from the other office, I get a phone call from one of the nurses, and they're like, oh my god. I'm so sorry, they shouldn't have told you to come over there, um, your gynecologist is out of the office, like, I'm supposed to give you your results, everything looks fine, we found, like, CIN2 and CIN3, which are precancerous cells, um, and so we're gonna have to schedule you for a leap, but everything's fine. And I'm like, okay, this, like, this is awesome, cool. Um, so then I get scheduled for the leave. That was, like, three, three weeks later, I'm going to say. Um, three weeks from the original visit. Um, the leave went well. Uh, I, <laughs> it was a fun, kind of a fun experience afterwards. Uh, the, I have had a leap done in the past, um, and a leap is like some sort of like laser procedure that they do, and they take a laser and they like burn out sections of your cervix. It's like really gnarly. Um, so the first time I had ever had that done was when I was like 18 or so. Um, 
maybe 19. I think it was 18. Uh, when I had that done for the first time, like, I don't think they gave me anything for it. They pretty much just numbed me up with some sort of, like, local anesthetic. Um, and I remember just, like, laying there and smelling something funny, and I was like, what the fuck is that smell? And it's like, oh, that's your skin burning. That's inside of your vagina that's burning. Oh, uh, it's... It was gnarly. Um, so for this time, they actually put me under. I was out. Um, and I woke up and I was just like the happiest person. I don't know what they gave me, but I was just on cloud nine. I walked out of there and I was like, be excellent to each other. Love one another. I was like all about spreading like love and positivity. It was great. <laughs> So, uh, was, like, a week later? I can't remember exactly. Um, by the way, there will be, I'll post, like, a timeline of all of these events, um, at the end of this video log, since I'm not, like, 100% sure about the dates. Um, so yeah, like a week later or something like that, I get a phone call, which I thought this is super, super unprofessional. I was not happy about them doing this. Um, I got a phone call saying, hey, you have cancer. And I was like, wow, like, you think that they would have, like, had me come in and they would have told me that face to face, not over the fucking phone. But anyways... So, I was referred to uh, my current uh, gyne-onc, which is a gynecological oncologist. Um, she's incredible. I love her to death. She's, like, the best gyne-onc ever. Um, not that I have really had much experience with other gyne-oncs, but she's fantastic. I'm going to stick with her. Um... So, met with her, discussed my options, which was, um, trachelectomy, I think it's called, uh, which is where they, God, I can't even, I can't even remember exactly what they do with that. I think they, like, cut out most of the cervix and then they create like almost like a tube or something to keep the cervix um open um and that way you could still have children you would just have to have a c-section in order to birth them um, but she was very clear that the gold standard was a radical hysterectomy, which is removal of the cervix and the uterus, um, but keeping your ovaries. Um, I was leaning more towards the trachelectomy, um, just because I did want to have kids at some point, but I ended up deciding to get the radical hysterectomy. Um, they scheduled me, or she scheduled me for an MRI and a PET scan. Um, like two days before I was supposed to get my first scan, I get a phone call from the uh, is radiology the radiology office saying, "Hey, your insurance denied it." And I remember I was so mad. First off, I was like, "Why on earth are you guys telling me this now? Like this shit should have been figured out like a week ago." <laughs> not cool. Second, uh, I, w I sat there and I was crying. I was in the middle of Home Depot looking at, I, I don't even know what the hell I was looking at. I think that they had like Christmas. Yeah, they had Christmas stuff out and I was looking at Christmas trees and I just remember sitting there crying thinking, 
my insurance is trying to kill me. <laughs> like, why are they not approving this? Like, this is not something you can mess around with. Um, so my doctor had to call my insurance and I guess talk to, like, the insurance doctor to get, um, the scans approved. And apparently that's, like, super, super common. Um, but it's just not really something that you want to deal with when you're dealing with a cancer diagnosis. So anyways, um... Uh, the next week, I want to say, was when I had my first scan. They were able to get me in, like, the next week. Um, on the way there, um, I didn't drive. I had a friend drive me. Um, he, yeah, he was the one driving. <laughs> we were on the freeway, and we got in an accident. And I'm still pretty annoyed about it because I'm a super, super cautious driver. And I I would have seen that accident from a million miles. I would have never gotten us in that position, in that situation. And so, yeah, I, I was like, of all the times for that to happen, it happens like when I'm on my way to get a scan for to see how bad the cancer is go figure um so yeah that car accident totally gave me ptsd like really bad ptsd and i'm sure some of you like rolling your eyes but no like i have a very difficult time being in the car uh, like driving myself and especially like letting other people drive like I've had like, panic attacks and yeah it's it's not fun whatsoever so anyways <laughs> um finally got the scans done uh my stage what it was stage 1b cervical cancer um, they didn't find anything on the scans, so I was like, okay, that, that's good to hear. It's not, like, you know, stage two or stage three, like, this is a rel it's a low staging, so easier to treat. Um, so I had surgery at the beginning of October, and that was an interesting experience, because... It was at a teaching hospital, and the doctors are fucking smoking hot. Like, seriously smoking hot. It was the weirdest thing. I was like, oh my god, am I in a TV show or something? Like, why are you guys all really good looking? Um, <laughs> it was so weird. Like, I was in a pre-op, just like, sitting there, you know, mentally preparing myself for, like, this multi-hour surgery, and the doctors are coming in, introducing themselves, so my anesthesiologist comes in to introduce himself, and he is, like, this smoking hot silver fox, um, and then he is, like, oh, and this is the resident that's gonna be, like, helping me during the surgery, and this guy is, like, smoking hot as well, and then, like, there were multiple doctors that were, like, smoking hot. And, yeah, it was just really weird. All I could think of is, wow, I'm, like, here I am. Like, I'm going to be, like, splayed open and, like, the most unattractive you could possibly look. <laughs> Seriously. Um, they did a fantastic job, though. And, I, oh, my God, I remember waking up and pack you and um or post op the waiting area pack you um and before the surgery started i was like just mentally preparing myself and i'm like i'm not gonna say anything inappropriate like as i'm you know high as a kite on whatever like painkillers are gonna give me will not say anything inappropriate um, and so I come to and pack you and I look at the nurse and oh my god, she was gorgeous, like smoking hot. 
<laughs> so I look at her and I was like, I just told her, I'm like, your makeup's on point and then just like conk out, like fall right back asleep. <laughs> so, so I was in the hospital for, um, three days, I want to say. It was a pretty gnarly recovery. Honestly, like, I guess you never really think about the muscles that you use until you, like, can't use them. And, yeah, you move, you use your ab muscles a lot. Um, oh, yeah, shoot, I should mention. Okay, so they, um, like, usually, there, there are, like, two ways that they can do, or maybe three. I think it's two ways that they can do a hysterectomy. They can do, um, and I'm not remembering what the terms are. There's one that's like, they make like little tiny incisions in you. Why am I not remembering what this is called? Oh my god, I'm like total brain fart right now. Anyways, the one that they did for me was they literally sliced open my stomach like that, like six inch incision. I think it's like six inches. I haven't measured it. Um, my, uh, I think that they could have done, why am I not remembering what this is called right now? Oh, it's fine, whatever. I'm sure one of you guys will tell me, like, what the other one is, where they, like, make the really tiny incisions, and then they, like, go in and do all the fun stuff just through the, the small incisions versus just, like, sling you open. <laughs> um, yeah, so... They'd cut through all that muscle, and yeah, I sh I remember like trying to like lift myself up. Um, it was very hard. <laughs> it was like, why do they not give you like some sort of like super sturdy like post that you can like pull yourself up with with like your arms versus. I would have to, like, literally wiggle around to try to, like, get myself up. I was, like, a damn wiggle worm. It was very weird. Um, it was, that was not, like, the best experience. I think I slept most of the time, honestly. Um, I probably consumed maybe, like, 500 calories in <laughs> the span of three days because I didn't want to eat anything. Um, granted, they also had me on a lot of narcotics, so I was pretty doped up. Um, yeah, so it wasn't, it wasn't bad though. I'm happy it went well. Um, and the incision looks really good. It's scarring. Um, it's, it, it's a good looking scar, if that makes any sense. Like, it's not like an ugly scar. <laughs> Um, so, was it like two weeks later, I want to say, or maybe three weeks, um, I don't remember exactly when it was, it was like a, at least two weeks later, I had a visit with, um, uh, my gynonc, and... She gave me the news that the cancer had been spreading. Um, during that surgery, they did a lymph node dissection where they pulled out uh, multiple lymph nodes and they tested it for cancer, or tested them for cancer. Uh, and they found, um, I think it was positive in like two different lymph nodes. So, I had to do chemo and radiation. Um, I started in, I want to say November. It was 
30 rounds of radi pelvic radiation um, every day, so Monday through Friday. And then, uh, was it like six, five rounds or six, five rounds, I want to say, maybe six, I can't quite remember, of um, chemo, intravenous chemo. It was a medication called cisplatin. So it is one that's not associated with hair loss. I was like, thank God for that. Um, the radiation <laughs> caused me to lose my pubic hair, though. That was not fun. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Not cool, man. Not cool. Um, and so, like, the really shitty part was that, you know, when I had the hysterectomy, I figured, okay, well, I could still have kids. I could have my own biological children. I can't birth them, but they'll be able to harvest my eggs. Well, radiation and chemo kills those chances. So I am infertile. Woo. Not done. Um, yeah, it's still shitty. It's still shitty to think about. I'm getting over it. It sucks, though. Um, but there's really nothing that you could do. I mean, I could have had my eggs, like, harvested and frozen um, before I started treatment, but... I decided not to because the cost was like it's really expensive <laughs> and I don't know my jeans are already pretty fucked up like I have a lot of issues and I don't really know if I want to pass those down onto a child at least that's what I was telling myself so um yeah so Chemo and radiation sucked, um, and because I had gotten in that accident and had legitimate PTSD from it, I was just an absolute basket case on the road, like, every fucking day. It was awful. That was the worst part. The worst part of the whole experience was just having to drive there and back every day my radiation appointments it was like a 15 minute appointment and it was like 35 minutes away from here so over an hour drive every day for a 15 minute appointment i'm like ugh, not fun now chemo days were longer i think it started at like 11 and then i usually wouldn't get out until like six o'clock or so. There were longer days. Um, it was so many, so many. So my, sorry, I'm sure this is really attractive. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was not fun. Um, I was insanely nauseous all the time all the time um but I didn't really throw up and I was so tired like I had no energy at all um yeah I'm like I hope I never have to go through that again but, I mean, it could have been worse. And I tried to get my medical marijuana card because I wanted to get CBD oil. And I thought that you had to have a medical marijuana card to get that. Um, but apparently you don't. So I spent like $300 <laughs> for no reason. I'm like, it was, that was a very interesting experience in itself. I was at, um, it was during one of my chemo infusions and I was sitting there and um I was like I just, I just can't deal with this anymore I'm like I'm gonna have to go get like a medical marijuana card so I can um 
so that I can get CBD oil. And the next day I went in, like, to this dispensary um, that was, like, in the ghetto. <laughs> it was pretty bad. I'm like, I really don't want to leave my Beamer in this area, but whatever. And just the whole experience was super fucking weird. Um, really weird. The doctor, I thought it was like an in-person visit, but nope. It was like a Skype call. <laughs> Literally, like a Skype, face-to-face -face Skype call. It was, I'm like, I'm not really sure if that's allowed, but whatever. I'm not going to say anything. Just give me my damn card. Um, I didn't actually end up getting that card until, like, maybe a week before treatment ended, <laughs> because they messed up the paperwork. So I'm like, oh, thanks, you guys. Like, that's great. Um, and then come to find out I don't even need it. So, great. Fun experience overall. And, and to top it, to top that off. Yeah, it doesn't work. CBD oil does not work for me. I'm sure it works for other people, and I'm like, awesome. You know, you do what works for you, and I wish that it would have worked for me. Like, I really do, because my other medication was not working. They gave me Compazine, and Compazine wasn't working. Um, they gave me... Um, a steroid and that was oh like that was not fun like the first oh okay yeah I didn't even tell you about my first infusion uh, that was awful so I get there and I get to the infusion center and I'm looking around and I saw this like one lady she was much much older and she was like all wrapped up in blankets and she looked very sick like, very sick and her husband was just sitting there just taking care of her my mom was with me um at the time or wait no yeah no she was with me and I just rem like remember sitting I started crying and I was like, you know, I don't, I don't know. I just don't want to have that happen to me. I don't want to be, like, older and have my family just, like, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. It was sad. It was a really sad moment. Um, but everybody there was so nice. All the other patients were, like, amazing. <laughs> they were so sweet. Um, I, this one lady, I think she had, like, ovarian cancer, she came up to me, and she was like, hey, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, it's my first time, and she's like, it'll be okay, like, we're all here for you, we all support each other, and, like, everybody was so sweet, it was incredible, and then, so I get, like, situated, and there was this one girl that was sitting um, in the same section as me, several seats over, and I remember looking at her, and she looked really, really sick, like really bad, really bad. Um, and we started talking, and she had the same name as me. She was the same age as I am. And she also had cervical cancer, but she had stage four cervical cancer. And, uh, yeah, that's, it's, that's bad. It's really bad. Um, it's like a 17% five-year survival rating, I want to say. Um, for mine, it's like 80 percent or 80 percent something like that for a five-year survival rating but apparently when you have um IBSF I think it's called which um 
uh, something space invasion. Uh, why am I not remembering this right now? I'm like, I want to look it up on my phone, but um, lymph vascular space invasion, LVSF. There you go. Um, when you are positive for that, I guess it like lowers your chances. Um, and I've been, I did so much research before. Um, or w when I got my diagnosis and I, there are so many like numbers that I w was seeing. Um, it's just, it's kind of all over the place. And I'm not really sure what number it drops my percentage down to, but it, it does, it does drop it. Um, so... Yeah, so I was sitting there, and I don't deal very well with needles. <laughs> I have a very bad habit of fainting <laughs> when I get my blood drawn, or when I get shots, or anything like that. Um, so I'm sitting there, and they were getting me hooked up to my IV, and the nurse is just like, poking me and she can't get it in and she's like oh like she finally just kind of sighed and she's like I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get this in, in you like did your doctor talk to you about getting a port and I was like no I wasn't even offered that as an option I didn't even really know that's a thing but um or a thing for somebody that's you know only going through like six um five or six infusions but um so she's like okay well you know I'm gonna go get another nurse to help out and she like walks away and I just started crying and I'm like this this is never gonna work <laughs> this is awful um so that other girl that I was telling you about the one that had cervical cancer she had a family member in there that had um uh, a service dog um, I think it was more a support animal, and so that lady walked over with her support animal, and she's like, do you want to pet him? And I'm like, just crying, and I'm like, yes, I want to pet your dog, and, and, uh, so apparently that helped, <laughs> because the nurse was able to get the IV in after I, like, played around with the dog a little bit, um, so, yeah, support animals. <laughs> They're totally worth it. They're fantastic. Definitely make a world of a difference. Um, so yeah, that was my first experience and it didn't go very well. I mean, once the IV actually went in me, it wasn't that bad. Um, wow, so I'm kind of getting off topic here. So I was talking about the medication that wasn't working. So um, they, before they give you the chemo, they load you up with a bunch of other stuff. They, uh, give you like obviously a saline drip they give you um benadryl um and like several other different uh, medications but one of the meds that they give you is a steroid and they gave me the full dose i thought nothing of it um the infusion went fine I got home, um, and maybe, like, the next day, um, okay, so they also gave me, um, a steroid to take, I want to say, like, twice a day for two days after my infusion, or maybe it was, like, once a day for two days after, but anyways, um, I, the next day, I started raging out raging the fuck out and it was like I like scared myself I'm like what the hell is going on so I called my mom and I'm like I don't really know what's going on here um and uh I don't know how we figured this out or how she figured this out but she was like dude like you can't take steroids like apparently um so I'm bipolar um, apparently, well, at least according to her, people that, especially, I guess, with the medication that I take, like, I'm not allowed to be on steroids. So, 
I called my doctor and I told her about that and they just had me stop taking them. And then they also like halved the dose for the upcoming um, infusions. And they also gave me um, a prescription for like Ativan I, or Xanax, one of them. One of the ones that like calms you down and makes you happy. Um, so the following um, treatments I took, like I popped two of those on the way to <laughs> to my infusion, and I was perfectly fine, <laughs> totally happy. <laughs> it it actually did make a difference. It really did. Um, so my last day, so my treatment went through the holidays, uh, through Thanksgiving and through Christmas. Um, and you'd think that I'd be like kind of bummed out about that. But if anything, like I was like, you know, I'm actually happy that it's happening during these holidays because everybody's just like super cheerful and there are lights everywhere and I, oh, I love Christmas lights. I love Christmas lights. So I it was awesome like being able to like drive around and just feel like like complete shit. But being able to see all the Christmas lights is just I'm like, oh I love it. Um I had somebody help me like put up Christmas lights outside during like one of the days that I was feeling well enough to do to do it um but I did put up my Christmas tree which was kind of a bummer because I had bought like a Christmas tree that's already it's a really really expensive very nice already pre-lit um fake Christmas tree and uh yeah that didn't get to I didn't have the energy to put that up, um, but that's fine. Because every time I'd come home at night, I would see my heart house like sparkling with dazzling white lights. It was gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I guess it wasn't a bad time for that to happen. Um, so my last treatment date, my last radiation date was December 28th. Um, and I was just so happy that I was done. They have like this little bell that you had to ring. Um, Sorry. <sighs> ah, I don't know why I'm getting so emotional right now. I am just stop. stop. Stop, stop, stop. Um, yeah, they have this little bell that you get to ring on your last day. So that was like really cool being able to ring that. <laughs> it felt kind of cheesy, but I was like, you know what? I've gone through all of that, so. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, I, what is it? March or February of this year, so 2019, I uh, did, I, no, you know what? I think it was February. I did my post-treatment, um, PET scan, I think it was, um, and then like a couple weeks later, I visited my gynoc and she gave me the news that I am cancer free. So yeah, I've been cancer free as of for four months now. I think I get in that like one hundred percent chart like of these dates, but. It'll be, you'll be able to see it in the timeline at the end of the, the video. 
Um, so yeah, fun stuff. So then, in March, so I guess this is not just going to be about, like, my medical issues. This is just going to be about everything that's happened in, like, the last almost year now. Um, in maybe late February, I th or, like, the very beginning of March, um my family found out that my 27 year old brother had got his 19 year old girlfriend pregnant and that she was due in May, May 10th. So, I mean, we were all just, I thought it was a joke when they told me that. I was like, no way, like, come on, you guys are really funny. Um, and, yeah, my mom was absolutely shocked. But I mean, we should have... I think we all, like, kind of knew because she was definitely gaining some weight. She was looking a little rounder in the tummy and... I don't know. I guess we were all in denial. Although we did... Every single one of us questioned them, asking, like, hey, like, are, is she pregnant? Or is there something that you guys need to tell us? They're like, no, 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 but um, apparently they just didn't want to say anything until after I was done with treatment, um, and especially because of the fact that I couldn't have kids, they were, you know, they just, they were concerned about saying something, so it's understandable, um, so yeah, there's that, which is just like, oh my god. A baby! Yay! <laughs> like, this is exciting! And then afterwards, I just, I was so angry. I was so angry. I'm like, the, these, the, these children, these kids are going to have a kid, and they've known each other for a year. And neither one of their both working like almost minimum wage jobs. I mean, my brother was still living with my parents and she was still living with her parents. And like these children get to have a baby and me, someone who's financially stable and secure, I'm like, I've no longer have that chance. Oh, that's great. Um, I don't, I don't necessarily think I'd like resent them or anything, but it did upset me. Um, so then, um, like a couple weeks later or a few weeks later, um, my mom tells us that she, um, they had seen something, she did like a, I don't, some sort of scan and the doctors were concerned about it. So she had to go in to get, um, That doesn't sound right. She had to go in to get surgery on her colon, and they were going to take out the mass that they saw in the scan. Of course, I'm freaking out because I'm like, oh my god, she has cancer. Like, this is bad. And then my mom and dad are like, oh no, you know, it's probably nothing and then the, the doctor was like oh no this is totally normal I see this every day I don't think it's anything to be worried about blah 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 and she goes through um surgery and they take her to pack you and then they call uh me back because my dad had left to go pick up my nephew um so they call me back and um, yeah, he's like, he's like, this is, this is bad. This is bad. 
And so anyways, we found out that it was stage 3B colon cancer. Um, and she sat there and I'm like, what are the odds of that? I, I was, this must have happened in February because I remember just thinking like six months, in the span of six months, two family members get diagnosed with cancer. I'm like, it just absolutely blew my damn mind. Absolutely blew my damn mind. So my mom, um, they did a, a PET scan or something on her, and they did find out that it had been spreading. Um, so I guess she wasn't eligible for radiation, um, or maybe radiation isn't, um, colon cancer isn't something treated by radiation. They, she is doing chemo right now. Um, she takes two, um, uh, is it two? It might be one. It, and a daily oral dose of chemo, which I didn't even know that's a thing. Um, I always thought that chemo was something that is intravenous that you go to the doctor to do, but come to find out, nope, it comes in a pill form. Um, so she does that every day, and then she was doing, uh, intravenous chemo, um, every three weeks. Uh, so they, the intravenous chemo only raises to her chances of survival, the five-year survival rating only like 5%, whereas the um, daily dose that she takes, that's what's going to do most of the work. And the, um, the IV chemo uh, is the one that has like the worst side effects, like hair loss and neuropathy. And so she was getting really, really bad neuropathy. And um, the doctor was worried about that being permanent, so they stopped her um, IV chemos. She literally had one more infusion left, and they decided to extend the uh, daily oral dose until, like, September, I want to say. So... Yeah, I feel really, feel really bad for her, but they, um, the place that she goes to, they have, like, a genetics department, um, they took her blood to do, like, I don't know, figure out, to test it, and then, um, one of the things that they test for is something called Lynch syndrome. And Lynch syndrome can cause colon cancer. It can cause breast cancer. It can cause a bunch of other cancers. It's like a genetic mutation, I think. Um, and then I guess my mom was reading that there have been cases of Lynch syndrome causing um, cervical cancer. I haven't really done much research on that. I don't think I've done any research on that. So I'm just so I I don't know. I'm like my grandma had breast cancer, which apparently can be caused from Lynch syndrome. And my dad, my biological father, died from pancreatic cancer. Um, so I'm kind of wondering if, like, am I, do I have Lynch syndrome? Like, I, I'm not sure if my mom has gotten the results back or not. But if um, she does turn up positive for that, then they will, um, they'll test me for free. They'll test me and, and my siblings for free. And, yeah, so we'll see see what happens and like cross my fingers that that's not the case because then it just raises my chances of having other cancers later on down the line and it's not like you know radiation doesn't already raise 
my chances of having cancers as well. I'm just like, oh my god, are you kidding me? Why is this happening to me? Um, okay, so... Then, let's see, like... What was it? Um, back in May, I want to say. I think it was May. No, maybe May. Um, I went to my psychiatrist and I got new medication for my ADHD. I had ADHD as well. Um, and she put me on. Why am I blanking? Oh my god, clonidine. She put me on clonidine, and I love it. I really love this medication. It's great. It's not clonopin. It's clonidine. Don't get those wrong, because one is kind of a narcotic, from what I understand, and the one that I'm not on is not a narcotic. I think it's normally used as, like, to control, like, your blood pressure or something like that. Um... So... Like, four days later, um, after I got prescribed this, I get a message from... What's going on with my phone over here? Oh, I can't tell if it's weird. Okay. Um, like, four days later, after I got my... After I started taking my medication, um, I get a like an email from my psychiatrist saying, hey, I need you to contact me regarding a contraindication between a diagnosis that you have received and um, your new medication. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, what now? <laughs> like, really, are you kidding me? Um, so she, come to find out, um, my... I had somehow been coded for something called sick sinus syndrome, and which sounds really weird. It sounds like it has something to do with your nose, but no, that's not the case. Sick sinus syndrome is a heart defect. Um, and so I was like trying to figure out, sorry, they talk about the sinuses and my nose is already. <laughs> um, I was like trying to figure out where did I get this diagnosis from? Because I sure as hell don't know anything about the sick sinus syndrome. Uh, nobody told me about this. And yeah, I'm like, this is news to me. So she pretty much told me like, oh, you're going to have to talk to your uh, primary care physician or you're going to have to um, like go see a cardiologist to figure this out. Like pretty much I need a doctor's note in order to continue filling that prescription so I went to a cardiologist and he's like he's like oh well we just don't see um sick sinus syndrome in people your age like I just I think it's some sort of admin error like they probably just miscoded you blah 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 and I'm like yeah that's cool and everything dude like I'm pretty sure that it was some sort of admin error as well but I still need a doctor's note, so what are we going to do about this? Um, so they hooked me up to a like, little portable um, heart monitor that I wore for 34 days. It was pretty gnarly because I had like, like literally right there, right there, and then right there, and right there, and then right there. It was completely hooked up, and it was miserable, and yeah, I was not happy. And so they had to do that for 24 hours, because my insurance requires it before they'll approve me wearing this for 30 days. Um, the 24-hour results were inconclusive, so yeah, I'm having to wear this for another like 28, 29 more days. It's just like, it's not that bad. And I mean, I get to change the electrode pad thingies out every day. So I do get to, you know, bathe and shower. Whereas with the other one that I had, like I didn't 
shower. I just kind of like did like a sponge bath because <laughs> I wasn't supposed to get anything wet. Um, so, yeah. Oh, oh, I should probably explain what sick sinus syndrome is because you guys are probably like, what? Like Google. Um, so sick sinus syndrome is a heart defect. Your sinus, I think it's like chamber or artery or something or another is apparently your natural pacemaker. And people that have sick sinus syndrome end up, um, I think most of them end up needing a pacemaker later on in the future. Um, and with the medication that I'm taking, and if I do have sick sinus syndrome, it can cause me to randomly faint. <laughs> and so I'm like, you know, so the cardiologist was like, oh, well, do you ever get faint or pass that out? And I'm like, oh yeah, I feel like I get lightheaded pretty often and I've definitely passed, like fainted before. Um, but I guess I always thought that was kind of normal. And, yeah, I don't think you <laughs> was too impressed with those answers, because I definitely, I think maybe if I had said, like, oh, no, that never happens to me, then maybe he would have just given me the doctor's note, but I was being honest. I guess I always thought it was just caused by, like, the medication that I take. So it's something that I've been dealing with forever now. Um, so, I don't know, we'll see. Hopefully I don't have anything. Hopefully I do not have a heart defect. But, yeah, fun stuff. So, anyways, so that pretty much catches you up to what's been going on with me since July 2018. Yeah. Um, fun stuff. It's a long video log, probably the longest video log I've ever done. I might cut this down into like a couple of parts. So. Alright, well thanks for listening. If you made it this far, you're awesome. <laughs> Alright, bye.